Cool. All right. Uh, what is IST? IST is a stable coin. Why do we care about stable coins? Uh, there, there, you may have heard there was a thing that happened to this, the stable coin that was uh, sort of dominant across the IBC ecosystem. We've been working on IST uh, as so for all more than a year. Uh, it is what you would imagine as like the first use case of the Agoric platform. Um, so Agoric is an IBC connected smart contract layer that lets you write smart contracts in JavaScript. Um, and so you can build arbitrary DeFi things on top of it. Um, part of the plan for Agoric has been to sort of launch with one family of smart contract applications on top of it before we sort of open it up to the entire world because Agoric is this like immensely sophisticated platform. Uh, like the, uh, the sort of kernel or operating system of the smart contract layer is 200,000 lines of JavaScript. Uh, it's this like really fancy uh, thing that is going to be like a smart contract environment that like no, we haven't seen before. Um, and it like builds on top of 40 years of work, but like our first demo of this is the uh, IST stable token. So what are the like sore core uh, uh, features? Uh, it is an over, over collateralized stable coin. Um, the basic mechanism design is very similar to multi-collateral DAI. Um, it is, it, because it builds on top of, it is all built out of the Agoric framework. It's not built out of the Cosmos SDK or Cosmwasm. It is this much more dynamic environment uh, that uh, allows for a programmability and extensibility of the issuance system, of the, of the liquidation system, of all of the stuff, and that's mostly what this talk is about. And then it is the IBC native, uh, it is an IBC native stablecoin uh, uh, mechanism. Like we want to be with IST, what maker is to ETH, uh, the sort of root uh, 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 leverage debt backed uh, decentralized stable asset across the entire IBC ecosystem. Um, yeah, so that, that mostly covered that. Okay, so like, what are the what are the pieces? We're gonna go. Uh, you know, I did a talk at uh, Gateway with Dean uh, that sort of was like an overview. We're gonna go. We're, this talk is gonna focus more on like the bits and pieces that make IST work. Um, so we have the Vault system. Uh, the vault system is a, is, a, is a CDP system. We have a parity stability module. Um, you uh, may hear about sort of the fluctuation and how much DAI is backed by USDC and how much DAI is backed by ETH and other uh, liquid assets and why, that's, why that fluctuates. Uh, in order to build the system, you need to have a similar mechanism. Um, we have this mechanism called build boost, which is mostly about, we'll, we'll come back to it, but it, 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 there is a mechanism by which uh, you can get small amounts of IST if you are a, a, a holder of the staking token on, uh, on uh, or if you're a staked holder of the, if you're staked of the staking token of the Agora platform. Um, we have a native automated market maker uh, because DEXs rule everything around them. Um, we have a liquidation module that is plugged into that uh, automated market maker. And then there is a stability reserve uh, that is always sort of the fallback mechanism to ensure stability of the protocol under extreme volatility. So you think of vaults. Um, so what is the vault user experience? The vault user experience is going to be, um, I want to, you know, uh, the, there's going to be an economic committee and a vote, vote of build holders that determine uh, exact collateralization ratios. But you imagine something like Adam, I have, um, I want to build, uh, I want to, uh, I want to have uh, like mint $100 worth of IST. Uh, I need to bring $150 worth of Adam over IBC, lock it up in this vault. Now I have my vault. Um, I can use those, uh, I can use, I have this vault. My IST is minted to me. Uh, if I want to get my Adams back, I repay the IST. Um, there is, the collateralization ratio also determines like where you're going to be liquidated and there's a liquidation penalty uh, if you are liquidated. Um, and so many of the same dynamics that we expect to see, uh, that you see in sort of the ETH world, you're going to see around these vaults. Uh, you're gonna have people arbing liquidations, you're gonna have people uh, uh, scrambling to top off their vaults, you know, when the market falls by 90%. Uh, you know, it's we're gonna we're gonna bring a lot of the fun and excitement of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the sort of maker system to the cosmos. Okay. 
This, I think, is the, is the, is the thing that is um, the most difficult thing when you're designing a stablecoin for people to understand. Like, why do you need a module that says, hey, we're going to take Sorry, US. Could you say that again? <laughs> uh, you're going to take. Uh, uh, you're going. To, why do you need a mechanism? Okay, we like we want decentralized stablecoins. We have in, in a world where there are decentralized stablecoins, we want to back them with like you know robust decentralized assets. We have atoms. We have Osmo. Why do we need this? Uh, why do we need to bring in custodial stablecoins into the into this mix? And like, what is this? Does this make any sense? The most important thing to understand about all of this is that when the market is long you expect the volatile assets to back most of the IST. As the market, uh, uh, when, but when the market turns short, when we're in a bear market, you expect uh, the, the main thing that is happening is people are buying, who want to buy those, uh, 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 those volatile assets at discount um, because they like, are, you know, this is a great time to like sort of like you know, build up your position, uh, and there's these great discounts on all these volatile assets that are getting uh, liquidated um, during uh, as the market goes down. And you need, you, but you don't want to, you don't want, you you don't want to put your own, you don't want to open up new CDPs to do that. You want to bring over USDC uh, and use USDC to arm the system. Um, and so we, ex what you would expect is what you see with multi-collateral die, which is this continuous fluctuation between being backing uh, most of the die outstanding. Uh, between uh, uh, volatile assets when the market is in sort of up only mode uh, and during periods of high volatility and when things go down, uh, you expect people to be bringing over USDC. Um, and so a lot of work, collaboration with the Osmosis ecosystem, uh, uh, with the Atom ecosystem, et cetera, talking to Circle a lot. Um, you also were going to have bridge stablecoins over, you know, other stablecoins bridging over things like Axelar and Nomad and all this stuff. It's going to be up to build holders to, again, set limits on how much uh, uh, IST gets minted by each one of these potential assets, how much risk we want to take. Um, but this is the this sort of core mechanism. The reason why you need to have the parity stability module is that it is going to enable efficient arbitrage and efficient retiring of debt uh, during periods of volatility and will maintain the stability of the asset. Okay. This is the thing that like triggers everyone. Um, so the first thing, because like you, you hear, oh, I can lock uh, 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 the staking token of the platform. I can get IST. This sounds awful like, like Terra and Luna. Like are we recreating UST? So like why are we not doing any, why, like, like none of this is happening. Like obviously we're, we're, not, do, we're not doing that. Um, why are we not doing that? So first thing is you expect this value to be really small. You expect this mostly to go. So the way the protocol works is IST is native to the L1. Um, it is a sort of a special enshrined stable coin uh, on, the, on the Agoric L1 on, that is run by Build. And so as long as IST is growing uh, or as really as long as IST is continuing to function, there is going to be a steady stream of IST from various fees to build holders. And basically what you're saying is, I'm going to just take essentially like an, uh, uh, I'm going to take out a loan against that future, which is that future stream of IST income uh, that as a staked build holder I, I get. Um, and I'm going to use that uh, uh, future to get like, you know, maybe like something on the order of like one to 5% of the dollar value of my build. Um, so I can start paying transaction fees, so I can start participating in the IST ecosystem without having to have any other assets. Um, it's especially important uh, when you think about the future in which IST will be like, where well, the full Agoric platform is sort of online and you have NFT mints and like all these, and like lots of other DeFi primitives and, you, and all of your transaction fees have to be paid in IST and you're like, I have build, why don't I have any IST? And this sort of enables you to like sort of get native access to the ecosystem. So that's the purpose of Build Boost. Uh, it is going to be, the expectation is going to be a very small portion of the uh, total IST issuance. Uh, the economic committee, which is this. All right. Uh, the economic committee, which is also this piece of the uh, of the of the ecosystem, is also going to, uh, which is like sort of this enshrined set 
uh, elected by the build holders of people who are going to advise on the parameters of IST. Um, we're going to set all of these things about like how much of the how much fees do you have to pay for this future loan to the protocol? What is the interest rate? What are the debt limits? Uh, how long do you give up the ability to unstake your build um, when you participate in this build process? You're going to be extending you like the period in which you can't unstake like well, far beyond you know the typical 21 days. So. Another thing that is sort of a key piece of the IST ecosystem is there is an AMM uh, on uh, there is an AMM on uh, on the uh, on the Agoric chain. Um, this AMM system mostly is there right now to support IST. Um, it's supposed to be the it's supposed to be a place where you can buy IST, where the protocol will be locking liquidity itself. Um, it's going to be the first place where liquidations happened. Um, it is not intended right now to be like a, you know, a, a real challenger to many of the other DEXs that are coming into Cosmos, um, but it allows us to um, it allows us to not have the problems of having to like um, sort of run the like liquidation auction system. It seems we we believe that this will be a more stable liquidation mechanism and a much more IBC native liquidation mechanism because. You know, one of the things that we expect to happen is we expect to have most of the IST will be off of the Agoric chain. Most of the IST will be uh, out in the interchain on Evmos, on Juno, uh, on Neutron, on like lots of other, on Osmosis, it'll be, it'll be in Osmosis liquidity pools, all these places. So when liquidations happen, you need to be able to bring, uh, uh, you need to be able to, so we're like liquidating into the AMM pool, but we don't liquidate all at once. There's like a control function that is constantly looking at how much the price oracle has changed, how much liquidity is available in the pool, how much how the price in the pool has been fluctuating relative to the oracle, and we are constantly figure like like there's this continuous control loop that is like trying to figure out how much liquidation to do at sort of every block, um, and so arbitrageurs are going to be able to will be I be seeing uh, uh, IST over uh, participating in these liquidations. Uh, also shoring up the collateralization ratios, um, but this is what this is like sort of a key sort of component of the of the vault system. All right, so sort of walked through what are the core bits and pieces of what makes uh, IST really unique. Um, a lot of people in Cosmos are building stable coins. It's pretty logical that that people are. You see them coming out of. Uh, various ecosystems, and many of them are, you know, especially with algorithmic stable coins being so disfavored, are, are doing, why do I think IST is, is going to win? Uh, why do I think IST has the potential to be the dominant stable coin in the, in the IBC ecosystem? And the real reason is, I think the competitive landscape of stable coins is going to continuously evolve. Um, and if you've looked at, like, for instance, how Maker is coded, like, the way Maker was built is like all of these like widgets strung together that were like basically like code generated in EVM Excel assembly and like formally verified as like connecting correctly together. It was it's like this beautiful monument, um, but it's also like it's like essentially the people who uh, who built all of that moved on and like you're never going to see like sort of major changes uh, to that code base. One of the things that the Agoric sort of smart contract environment is doing. It's like safety properties, it's, it's extensibility, your ability to like naturally write asynchronous contracts and reason about asynchrony and failure modes and all this stuff is that we think we will be, we expect that IST will be very extensible. So, you know, with DYDX coming to Cosmos, uh, supporting interchain accounts, you will be able to have positions on, uh, on like on, on perpetual markets that you'll be able to use as collateral uh, in, in, you know, with future IST upgrades. Um, you can have liquidation insurance uh, provided by other parties. Um, we can liquidate potentially in the future on not just the native AMM of, of Agoric, but on Osmosis and other uh, 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 DEXs that will exist. Um, the, uh, the role of the AMM can be swapped out with a vote of the build, uh, builder's DAO. Um, so, you know, we could start out with this like Uniswap V1 style uh, liquidation mechanism and AMM. Um, there will, you know, people will bring new, build new AMMs on top of the Agoric platform. 
uh, those can eventually be swapped out. So, and that can have the same mechanisms with liquidations, with the, with the protocol holding liquidity there. Uh, those are, those, all of that stuff can be integrated. So my biggest concern relative to like all the other platforms is like Agoric was built for this. It was built for building these like extensible, complex, composable, uh, multi-component DeFi ecosystem things and is designed to arrive, allow like rapid development and rapid evolution uh, relative to other things. There is so much we don't know about how IBC will work in the future. Um, and I think the Agoric platform really allows us to build like a, a truly radical state of the art stable coin. Um, so just like dive a little bit more into the details of, of, of what it is that we've got here. How does a liquidation work? Um, you have this Oracle. The Oracle is plugging is uh, the Oracle is driving uh, is providing a continuous feed of asset prices. I think we have another slide where I go a little bit more into detail about how the Oracle works. Um, so you have the Vault Factory, like think software factory object. Um, you're putting assets in. You get you get an individual vault. Um, you're continuously feeding into the Oracle. Um, as the as the Oracle prices drop, eventually control over the vault is handed over to the liquidation mechanism. Um, where the liquidation mechanism is tries to liquidate as much as, retire as much IST debt as possible. That's essentially the model. Um, people wonder like, hey, another question that like continuously comes up is, oh, like how can you back a stable coin uh, with an asset that's very volatile? Um, it isn't, the, this, the whole mechanism for stability does not depend on stability of the underlying backing asset. What it depends on is whether or not you can efficiently arbitrage a price, the, the discount that exists during liquidation. So like, can you retire IST from the system? Can you remove IST from the system faster than the, than the uh, uh, can you remove IST from the system faster than like uh, uh, the price is falling and your, the value of your collateral is falling? And this is why we think Adam is a really good asset for this. Uh, Adam is traded on a lot of venues. Um, you can be buying uh, 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 you know, a well-capitalized market maker uh, can be buying uh, discount atoms and selling them without actually having to transfer them um, sort of instantaneously on multiple venues. Um, so this should be a really robust mechanism for ensuring stability. Um, in the event that that mechanism fails, uh, there's also this protocol reserve of assets that can continue to buy uh, uh, IST and retire IST from the system uh, when collateral, uh, when like, like prices are falling. Um, this is a, the, a sort of a description of the mechanism of uh, if you are staking build, how do you participate in the system? And it's basically that every user of the system is going to be paying you IST. Um, uh, so again, this, the uh, BLD right now is an inflationary token. Uh, there's like, I think roughly like 5% inflation right now on the Agoric chain. Um, so there are, is, is some uh, Agoric rewards. We do expect that as the economy uh, uh, takes off, eventually build rewards are going to be sort of become less necessary and IST rewards from people using these systems will eventually take over. Uh, but again, IST is like, this is like one of the advantages of having sort of a native enshrined stable coin uh, is that you can like deeply work it into the crypto economics and the token of the system. Um, and so, you know, if you hold build, you should be very excited about the uh, 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 sort of launch of IST. Uh, it is going to drive a lot of value. Um, and like allow you to earn stable coins for staking. Um, this is just uh, again sort of reiterating the uh, the, me the stability mechanism over collateralization, liquidation, price oracle that is going to bring in prices from a lot of different places. Um, we have this reserve, which is an initial capital allocation that it will actually be locked in the liquidity pools plus gas costs, plus fees, uh, continuously growing the reserve as the platform grows. Um, and then also the build holders can sell build to build up uh, the reserve as well. We have an Oracle network. Um, the Oracle network is probably, it's still the thing that like, I think we have uh, the most work to decentralized. Um, we will have the builders, the build DAO will like, so right now currently elects a set of uh, Oracle network contributors. They will constantly be pricing in USD, the price of the collateral. Um, we've sort of worked with a bunch of people who are sort of big operators of chain link nodes, um, who are also sort of uh, uh, 
uh, uh, agoric validators um, to ensure that we can like improve this. It can be con can be extended. Like we can uh, we can add interchain queries and stuff like that, so that you could potentially get prices from like Osmosis and other DEXs uh, to inform this in the future. Um, and so node operators are are continuously submitting prices to an aggregator. Um, think very similar to like the the Maker Oracle uh, is is been the inspiration. And then finally, we have this like sort of two tier governance system. Um, there is going to be a proposal soon. Uh, for members of an economic committee who are going to be involved in uh, tweaking some of the parameters in the system. We've already announced a contract with Gauntlet um, to help inform this. Um, and so they can, they are both like sort of have direct control over these things like debt limits, collateralization ratios, and interest rates. And they can also propose like larger changes to the system. Um, but also like any Cosmos chain uh, or most Cosmos chains, we do have like sort of token holder governance. Um, so they elect the ec economic committee, they add new collateral to the vaults. You know, if you think, um, you know, if you think that your token should be there uh, in the vault mechanism, you know, there's going to be this back and forth with the economic committee and the builder's DAO uh, to uh, sort of add new collateral to the system, but it is expected to be dynamic. Um, and then all of the code changes and upgrades, especially in the early days when any new code that has to be deployed uh, on Agoric is going to require a full DAO vote. Um, and then setting the reward weights, adding new liquidation mechanisms. So how do you get involved? Um, we, have, uh, uh, we have a lot uh, that we are looking for the uh, sort of IBC and Cosmos community to get involved in. Um, we are looking for alternate front ends. Um, there are probably a few technical milestones that are like, that before that like really, uh, but like should be soon. Uh, before you can really do it. Um, if you think about how liquidations are going to be working, you can see how MEV is going to play a really strong role in this. And sort of the naive sort of Cosmos mempool is not going to get us uh, to where we want to be in terms of the stability and security of this platform, where you have People where you have these time localized events, i.e., the price of atoms just went down 30%. Now you have people racing to uh, uh, short, you know, to add uh, collateral to their vaults to to or pay down their IST debt, and then you have liquidation starting and people racing to arb the liquidations. Um, so we need sort of a next generation mempool. All of this M M M MEV stuff that like people like Mechatech and, S and Skip are working on is going to be incredibly valuable uh, to this ecosystem. Um, and then, as I said, like all of this code is all open source, the parity stability module, the DEX, the vaults. Uh, we are looking for contributors. Um, if you are uh, a market maker or just a whale, um, there's going to be a lot of opportunity to participate in this arbitrage system. Uh, we're looking for people to write tools for this. We have this like uh, event coming up called the economic stress test, which please reach out to me where we're going to be like sort of simulating how does all the software perform under different volatility conditions and giving people the test opportunity to test out. We might run this continuously even after we go into production. Um, if you're bridges, we're looking for all of the people who are building uh, bridges to, to be uh, participating in our collateral onboarding process um, and to move IST beyond the IBC ecosystem. Um, and then, you know, we are very excited about sort of order books, delta neutral, stable coins, uh, building on top of perps, building on top of all the new DeFi primitives uh, that are coming to Cosmos. So I believe uh, that is it. Um, so we have these, we, we have been embracing the ice tea time, the ice tea, IST, ice, ice tea uh, meme uh, for us. The Twitter account is in, inter protocol. Uh, we do, we've been doing relatively regular community chats, but we are uh, excited to do this. Uh, you know, we're pretty hopeful that we'll be live for Cosmoverse. That's what we're hoping for. Um, uh, this is, uh, continues to be like sort of our overwhelming uh, uh, position as an engineering community. Uh, and then we have uh, inter.trade is sort of the first website sort of uh, describing the protocol. And we have the at inter protocol Twitter account. Uh, and we have uh, a Discord chat. Uh, all these things are pretty active at this point, uh, but really excited about more community uh, participation. Uh, please reach out to me. Uh, and this, I think, is going to be like one of the biggest things for uh, Atom Utility going forward. Uh, and so really excited to bring more people into the community.
I can do a few questions, or people can go to lunch. Depends how hungry everyone is. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, here, let's try this. So one question about uh, stable coins. Uh, I assume that there are going to be some stable coins that are going to be lost. So in the final, there's like some deflation in that. What do you think about that? If really or the amount of stable coins can be like block or I don't know. Well, you expect the amount of IST to like be variable over time, right? Like as demand for like leverage goes up, like people want more leverage on, you know, Either people are like, hey, I have like a lot of, ad you know, my atoms are way up. I want to buy a house uh, or a yacht or whatever. Uh, they'll, they'll, you know, they'll go and issue a bunch of IST. Like one of the reasons why I think this kind of stable coin has become such a key piece of like the DeFi ecosystem is because it gives you this like instantaneous access to leverage. Whereas in any traditional like lending protocol, you have this time mismatch between like the borrower is there, but the lender doesn't exist. Or the lender is there, but the borrower doesn't exist. And so you either have idle capital or you have insufficient capital to meet demand. And you have this, and like it takes time for the capital to move. When you have a stable coin protocol like this, yes, it in some senses is, it's less capital efficient, but like you don't have this time problem where you can immediately get access to uh, leverage. And so this is what I expect is like, I think you expect to see like, and you see this with Maker, this like fluctuation in the amount of dye that's out there. It just like goes with basically like how long everyone is on the protocol. Cool. Anyone else? So the question from Tom was uh, why build on top of Agoric in instead of someone out somewhere else? And I think this is the this is the this is the key key piece, right? Which is Cosmos SDK, Cosmwasm, none of these things were really designed as like as the as these like Lego building infrastructure where you have this like complex protocol that is made up of many interwoven subparts that have to that are like are are linked in this like complex world and then like also designed to work with like all of the asynchrony um, that comes from the IBC world. Um, I think like building a liquidation mechanism, for instance, that like operates over interchain accounts and like liquidates uh, 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 that is like li that is like liquidating with o o over interchain accounts. That is talking to like a Cosmosm smart contract somewhere else. Having like this kind of asynchrony friendly, easy to reason about uh, control plane that like is both secure and extensible is like to me. This is like the 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 the, the true stress test of the Agoric platform. And like if the Agoric platform can do this, it can actually do all the other things that we imagine it'll be able to do which is basically allow us to build like sort of next generation DeFi. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I on it, I expect that like liquid, the, as the like liquid staking market mat matures with Quicksilver and Stride and uh, and like Lido and all these things, as, soon as we sort of get the, the liquid staking stuff uh, uh, figured out, eventually the dominant form of collateral is probably gonna be the liquid staked assets um, uh, and not, not, not the native assets. But one of the things that you need is you need ARP to exist. And so that requires liquid markets for those assets to evolve over the next couple of years. Indeed. Right? Yeah, yeah. And like, Everything about the way the software architecture is built means that you could be like, hey, like, there's a str there's cash flow coming to my uh, liquid staked asset so that my vault is like sort of self repaying, right? Um, and that, this is like why, again, like to like loop back, why this is like why Agoric, like why do this this way is because like the economic components that like we're gonna keep building on top of like don't exist yet. And with every, every other way of doing this, it's gonna be like, yes, you could like build this like Kava-like you know, system uh, on, top of, on top of Cosmosm. And then if you wanna change anything, you have to replace the whole thing. 
right? And you get all of the risks that come with like making these like large risks, these large changes. The idea of, if you look at the uh, IST code right now, everything is like nicely abstracted and componentized. So it's like, oh, I want to have a new kind of vault that has this like self-repaying mechanism, interacts with IBC and according to this API, and can be like my Quicksilver, you know, my Q Atom, my Q Osmo, et cetera, are going to be paying off that asset. Um, you just are creating a new vault. You don't have to touch the rest of the code. The, there's like a, a defined vault, vault interface. And it's not like, you know, and it's just like, like Go was not intended for doing anything like this. Rust is also not intended for doing anything like this. Um, you know, so that, and like, you know, Mark Miller and Dean and all have spent like the last, in, uh, you know, Dan Connolly and all have spent the last 40 years turning JavaScript into the environment to do this. And so we have the pieces to do this. Um, and I think this is like, again, this is like why you do it this way. Um, LTV? Yeah, it's going to be something on the neighborhood of like 1 to 5%. It's, you know, basically we have to estimate like what the rate of growth of the IST ecosystem is and what we expect future IST cash flows are. Because you don't really want to be like taking, because like you have some term at which you're like you're expecting the, like you can't unlock your BLD if you're doing BLD boost. You can't unstake until, you're, until your debt is paid. But like you still, you don't want people taking out like 30 year BLD mortgages, right? You want, you, you, it's like a year is like roughly what you're looking at. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience, everyone. Have a lunch.